That was Sam Bradford back with his team, obviously, in addressing the media for the first time now that all that offseason drama with the Eagles is behind him. Now, Seahawks defensive end Michael Bennett decided to weigh in yesterday after he heard from Bradford saying this, quote, I listened to Sam Bradford again. I just almost threw up. I can't believe Sam Bradford is complaining about making $40 million in the next two years and because he actually has to compete for a position. This guy, this guy right here definitely sets a bad tone of what a player should be. If I was his teammate, how can you play with a guy that doesn't want to compete at a high level and feels like his position should be solidified without even putting up the stats or the wins to back that up? Skip, have you now changed your stance on Bradford? Not only have I not changed my stance, Mr. Smith, I feel more strongly than ever about how I dug in on this conflict from the very start. I am getting sick and tired of this story because I'm getting sicker and tireder of the wrong-headed reactions to Sam Bradford's original reaction to this conflict. And Stephen A., the irony, I'm going to say it one more time, I've never been a big Sam Bradford fan. That's why this is surreal to me. And yet I find myself his, his lone public defender for what I believe are all the right reasons. Let's start with Michael Bennett, who's completely off base. He has completely missed the point when he says he's making $40 million for two years and he actually has to compete for a job. That's, that's wrong because he, look, here's the point, Stephen A. If this were a fair fight, if Sam Bradford next year were, were competing head to head with this kid from North Dakota State for the starting job of the Eagles, he would win it hands down. He knows it. You know it. I know it. He's not afraid of competing against this kid. He's afraid of competing against the money and the draft choices invested in this kid because the game is rigged. It's over. It's just a matter of time before Carson Wentz takes over for the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think they're going to be very good next year. So the clock ticks. Is it game six, seven, eight, when the Carson Wentz era begins? Now let's go to Howie Roseman's contention yesterday. Sam Bradford should have connected the dots and realized we were going to take a quarterback. No, he had no idea you were going to trade from the eighth spot in the first round all the way up to the second spot, a la an RG3 kind of a trade to go up to number two and take him as we saw the Redskins do, it's game over for the incumbent starter at that point. So, Howie Roseman, no, Sam Bradford could see, Tom Condon, his, his illustrious agent, could see they were going to take a quarterback in the second round or the third round or the fourth round. Totally different. No competition, no threat. Sam Bradford inked the deal in Philadelphia in the spirit of being the starting quarterback at least for one year, if not for two years. But now, he was very honest yesterday, he's frustrated because he, he was forced, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he was forced to come back to Philadelphia, as I told you last week, because the market has dried up. He, it was too late in the game. It was after the draft. Everybody's got their quarterback for next year, unless somebody gets hurt, obviously, in camp or early in the regular season. And Sam Bradford is stuck in Philadelphia. There's no competition in camp unless they want to throw Carson Wentz into the lineup did the fire right away. But in the big picture, it's over for Sam Bradford. He knows it. He's now a placeholder for that job because there's no real competition, Michael Bennett, for that job. I know what you're going to say, so go ahead and say it. Well, what I would ask you to do, Skip, is listen to my point of view and listen uh, with, with, with a third ear, because obviously you, you, you only have two, and those are the only two that you care about. Try to get a third one, and hear me and hear me good. I get where you're coming from. Doesn't make you right, makes you emotional, it makes you, and, and, and you know, you, you have points, but you have to take the total situation into consideration. We all recognize what situation Sam Bradford has been put in by the Philadelphia Eagles moving from the eighth to the number two spot overall. We're not blind or oblivious to that. Just because we don't agree with you doesn't mean we lack comprehension about what his situation may be. What we are saying is who the hell does he think he is? You have a 25, 37 and one career record as a starter. 
You, your best season was this last year with the Philadelphia Eagles, who were 7-7. Seven and seven. When the news came down that they had traded up for the number two overall pick, Skip Bayless, he went and said that he was frustrated, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I had the pleasure of having super agent himself, Mr. Tom Condon, on my radio show, Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time every weekday. I had him on my show last week to talk about Sam Bradford. And what he said was Sam Bradford did not tell him to do anything. He told Sam Bradford, Sit a step, step aside. You do the playing. Let me be the agent. He said we made this push because we thought we had an opportunity to get to Denver. We thought we had an opportunity to land with the reigning defending Super Bowl champions. So it wasn't just about emotion. And it wasn't about frustration. It was about Sam Bradford trying to get to a better situation. And for some way, for some reason or another, the deal fell through. It didn't go down. But in the end, all of that still fails to gloss over what Sam Bradford's role in it. Because I had actually softened my stance on Bradford once I listened to Tom Condon because you're the agent, you're looking out for the best interest of your client, you have an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl champions who are clearly a better team, and your competition would have been Mark Sanchez, who is not that guy anymore. That would clearly have been a better situation. So why wouldn't Tom Condon do that? Fair enough. But now here comes Sam Bradford. Addressing the Philadelphia media yesterday, and acknowledging his level of frustration. Okay, so let's analyze that frustration. You have a two-year deal. It's for $36 million. You have $22 million in guarantees. You were planning to come back and prove yourself so you can ultimately get the right long-term deal in your mind that you believe you would deserve from the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles have had you for a year. They've watched your career in St. Louis, and they made the determination that you were worth the risk for two years, but if we could get ourselves another quarterback, so be it. I remember Joe Montana in San Francisco, Steve Young. Everybody was talking about Steve Young. That didn't stop Joe Montana from going out there and performing. I remember Brett Favre in Green Bay. All right, had Aaron Rodgers sitting on the bench when Ted Thompson and those boys clearly wanted Ted, uh, Aaron Rodgers to be the heir apparent sooner than later. I don't recall it stopping Brett Favre from competing, but somehow, some way, it's going to stop Sam Bradford. Why? Because it's not a real contest? Well, to me, Sam Bradford is competing against himself because regardless of what the Eagles' intent is, if you were willing to come out there and perform when there was no Carson Wentz and you were looking forward to having a long-term deal, why just because Carson Wentz arrived does that change your, your, your mindset as it pertains to how you must perform? Because even if the Eagles are going to inject Carson Wentz into the equation, in the end, if you perform, somebody else is going to want you and you were looking to go to somebody else the second you knew Carson Wentz was coming anyway. So to have this kind of attitude where you didn't want to show up to work, even though it was your right because it was voluntary at the time, but you didn't want to show up to work and you didn't want to work out and you didn't want to get yourself prepared for the upcoming season with Philadelphia because you were frustrated was not only childish, but it was also Bush League because Sam Bradford has done nothing in the NFL to deserve security. Not that. A lot of other things, yeah, but not security. He has not done anything to deserve that, Skip. Nothing. Okay, which is why when you compare him to Joe Montana and Brett Favre, it's not fair because clearly sort of those two guys at that point when Steve Young came along, I mean, Joe Montana was already being proclaimed the greatest quarterback ever and Brett Favre was already... I'm pretty sure a first I'm just talking about a guy on the bench. I'm just, yeah. I'm just okay. talking about a guy on the bench where you know they wanted him to play and they wanted you out. That's all I mean by okay. that. Okay. All I know is that the spirit of the deal was he was going to get a one-year shot for sure to either reprove himself to the Eagles or maybe prove himself to another team because he's only 28 years old. So he's still got some playing. And he's got, I don't know, he could play 10 more years in this league, even if it's as a backup quarterback. But he thought he was at least going to have the stage to himself for one year and have to perform at a high, high enough level, obviously, to keep the job. But again, if, if you had cut him loose earlier, remember, they brought in Chase Daniels. So it looked like it was the one-two punch of Sam Bradford starter, Chase Daniels, the backup. But when you throw Carson Wentz into the occasion, all bets are off. And so Sam Bradford's saying, gee, 
I wish I had had the Denver opportunity before Mark Sanchez landed in Denver because I just just me, I, I believe Elway would have taken Sam Bradford over Mark Sanchez. It, all, yeah, but, all things being equal, going back whatever it was, two, three months that, ago. That's fine, but as plausible as that argument may be, th Skip, think about how pathetic Sam Bradford looks in that equation. So in other words, what I want to do is I, I, I want this year to perform no matter what. I want the security blanket of going out there and not really having to worry about competing, not really having to worry about this guy being inserted into the equation for year one. We only talk about year one because I understand the long-term concerns, but I'm dismissing it because he had opportunities to sign long-term deals with Philly, and he didn't want to because he wanted to put himself in a better position True. to get a better offer. He did. So I ain't worried about that. Okay. Let's stick to the one year. The one year, Skip, we got to remember, Carson Wentz is the future, and most NFL teams would prefer to have the luxury of not having to inject their rookie into the line of fire so prematurely because they have no other choice. So if Sam Bradford had gone out there and performed, chances are the Philadelphia Eagles, because it's just one year, would have left him alone and let him be. He don't want the, the pressure or the discomfort or whatever word you believe is apropos. He doesn't want to have to deal with that because he wanted that security blanket. What non-winning, mediocre, below 500 quarterback in NFL history do you know of that had that kind of security? Who, do, who, are, who is this person? Because it doesn't happen for anybody but the elite dudes. Okay. It doesn't happen. Again, here I am having to defend a guy I've called Sam Badford on this show a number of times. But remember, by the way, 25-37-1 and one is, is better than I thought he was. When you threw that record out, I was like, wow, has he been that good? He was the that good, 12 okay. games under 500? Well, I'm just saying, given the fact he was the first overall pick in the draft, oh. as you know, and wound up with a team that was bad enough to be able to select him number one, the St. Louis Rams, who were not great. Neither was he. Couldn't he's stay been, healthy. Skip. Okay, but he's they weren't great. He's been in the league for five years, man. He's been in the league five years and okay. never had only his first time. Only had one 500 season in five years. I, I agree, but he has shown me flashes of not greatness but goodness. I thought he was good down okay, the stretch last year. Okay, I give you year. that. Okay, and yet remember, you're missing one other point. The whole staff is new this year. Doug Peterson, Frank Reich, John D. Filippo. That now they've picked their guy. He wasn't their guy. They I'm, inherited I'm not, him. He's stuck in a terrible fair. situation. That's not fair, Skip, because I'm not missing that. I, the reason I didn't bring that up, Skip, is because the man signed the two-year deal knowing they were new. Knowing that. Okay, it's not but, like but they, he, he wanted, signed a deal and then they came. He okay, knew it when but, he but signed he, the contract. He wanted shorter term because he wasn't sure about them, just as they're probably exactly. not sure about him. And, and they're not and sure they're, about him. They're so unsure about him, they went up to number two to take so? the savior, the golden boy from North Dakota State. And, and, I, and to and me, I, if, if he's that good, if he's worth that much draft ammo and that much money, they should just start him from the start. That's and, just and, me. And I, just play well, That's not. I, I don't agree with that. I think that most teams, if they could afford the luxury, would prefer you to get that first year under your belt, A. And B, in the end, what it comes down to is that in all likelihood, this coming season, was not compromising to Sam Bradford. The future, yes, but not this season if he performed. He doesn't want the pressure of having to perform, which is utterly ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. No, it's not. We agree I, to yes, disagree it is. here. I can already hear the Carson, is... Carson chants in so? Philadelphia. So what? Yeah. So what? Deal with it. You're a professional quarterback. Yeah. Stop being a big baby. Big mm. baby. Perform. All right. You referred to RG3 earlier, similar yeah. situation. They actually, Eagles, open up the season against Cleveland, so it'll be interesting to see who's under center for both mm. teams there. No question who's running the show, though, in Cleveland. LeBron going hard in the paint last night in game one and still hasn't lost a game this postseason. So is there more pressure on him than ever to win a chip? We'll discuss after the break. That's about